Okay, everybody ready? Yeah. Good afternoon again. Welcome to the here. I just have an opportunity to talk about talking to, to people who have experienced growing up in shock. And this person is a perfect, well, two people actually, but he was really a good person. And we did a videotaping of him already. And we had, we had, we talked for a few hours, three hours, and we could have gone on for much more. He, because he has such great stories about growing up in Shakopee. And so today what we're going to do is just have an opportunity to do that, is just chat. And we're just going to let, he's just going to sit here. And as long as you can hear him, hopefully you'll hear him. Some, some of you are children of his. Some of you are great great yeah, Who's your children? Yeah. Like my kids. Yeah. kids. And in laws. And in laws. Yeah. Yeah. And in laws. Yeah. 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 Rather than in laws. And grandchildren. Right? Yes, and grandchildren. And great. So that's kind of nice too. There's a great And it's nice to have him here. She said, he says you're here because he wants to find out good stories to bug him for the rest of his life. <laughs> But we're going to just start by just saying, tell us who you are and where you grew up. My name is Hilary Drees. Baptismal name is Hilarius Antonius. The same as my father. He never signed. The only time he signed that, Hilarius Antonius, was on a 1040 and the tax statements that had to go to the county. Otherwise, it was H.A. He never used any other name but H.A. And what, what were you calling yourself then? Hillary. Hillary. That's what my mother called me. Other name. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary or Hilarious Antonius is really Latin. That's the way so my birth Hillary certificate is. Hillary Anthony is the English version. My birth certificate. I was born in Dorsey, Minnesota. You all know where that is. One person does, I know. Matt knows where that is. And, uh, my father and his brother, Matt, they farmed together up in Dorsey until the drought and the depreciation, uh, depression came. And Dad moved down in about 1942, uh, uh, 34, 06, 1940-06. I started school in St. Mary's school, uh, school. That was my first grade. And then north of us lived, south of us lived, Judge Morarity. We all know that name. Mm -hmm. And I have two chairs, one chair and one rocking chair from him. He was, he was taking them out of his house one day, and I was, I was always over there playing with Mannix. Mannix Morarity played with me in the sand. Uh, Somerville was the gravel road, and I would clean trucks in that gravel road and Mannix would come down and play with me. He was 18 years old. And one day he was gone. Where did he go? Nobody told me. But when he got killed, you know, then I heard about it. And I thought he went down in the South Pacific. But in the Shakopee book, he went down by the Ocean Islands. And they flew cover over him until because they couldn't land. The uh, seas were so rough until he disappeared. Well, anyway, I got those chairs from Dr. Uh, Rarity. He was dragging them out. I said, what are you going to do with them? I'm going to throw them out. Can I have them? Oh, yes, you can have them. So I went and got Dad, and he got the chairs. I still have them today. They're humongous. They don't fit in any place but a museum. <laughs> His arms are this wide. Stand this side. And uh, they followed us around. Well, anyway, we moved there. I'm maybe going to get ahead of myself because of all the rain and water. Does anybody remember 1966, 8, when, the gravel, when Oscar Roberts' gravel pit filled up with water? Anybody remember that? <laughs> yeah, you lived there. That's why you did. I lived on the farm on Oscar Roberts' gravel pit farm. And that spring, like this, the water started up south of Shakopee by Spring Lake. 
and it came down the mountain, the hills, and crossed over, they call that the Spring Lake Road, the Marshall Road now, by Joe Mennett, and it headed west. And down by Lions Park, there it made a U-turn, and it came east through that draw. My son lives in one of those houses where the draw is. Mm -hmm. And it filled the gravel pit up with, within about four hours. It was pumped full of water, and the remainder went over the top, went east past... My daughter works at that place. Me mechanics Illustrated. Uh, illustrated uh, Mechanics. Uh, social yeah. Mechanics. Yeah. Mechanics. Yeah. It went east past their place and then uh, maybe a mile and then it headed north towards Canterbury. And it filled up 4th Street that you could have floated a boat <laughs> on that water. It went in one day. And, and then over the night the frost went out and the water was gone. But it took all summer for the gravel pit to dry out. Yeah. yeah that was about weather like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Long as the water. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> That's okay. You can go back and forth yeah. any way you want. <laughs> Where do we want to go? <laughs> well, we lived on 4th Street, okay. up with Judge Rarity. And then my dad found himself, he worked for Rar Bounty. And he was the first secretary of the Union at Rar Malton for two or three years. And then something happened, he quit that job, and he got a job with Alex Rodemacher. He had the Pullman Cafe, the Pullman Restaurant, and the Pullman Bar. And his first job was to sit on the stool by the door of this room. It had four rows of one-armed bandits. <laughs> you know what they are. Yeah. That was his first job. And and we were living in town then, and he found himself going down to the bar and playing cards <coughs> and drinking. That didn't suit him. So he rented a farm. Um, uh, Doyle was the name, Mrs. Doyle, 40 acre farm by uh, St. Mary and St. Mark's Cemetery. And that little farm. The water tower area. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> and then, the water tower is. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because he had too much time in the hands. And then he planted corn, checked the wire. This is one that I just love to tell. <laughs> and you're supposed to color it with the row and then crossways, see. But if you don't pull the check wire tight the same time you move it, the wires, the knots from here to here, they're supposed to be like this, see. But they go like this, 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 and you can't color it crossways. So he had a tractor with a one row cultivator and he couldn't do it. So he went down to Ed Smith. He lived a quarter mile down and borrowed his horse cultivator, put it in the back of the tractor. And I was six years old, seven, eight. My job was to drive that tractor with that cultivator. And I Damn, kid, get that in the ring. You can't follow the rows. Well, no, they were here and they were here like this. And I started crying and I got off and I ran up to the house, got behind mom's skirt, and dad in there after me. Where is that kid? Mom said, You leave him alone. You can't do it alone, so you do it now. You don't get to it at all. So that was the end of that. And that that's when I, I relished that one. So you well, did be under your, with your mom, and so you Oh, got... yes. She was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Mothers and sons are perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but fathers and daughters are best. <laughs> yes. What was well, anyway, whatever happened, he got in contact with these two ladies. So he bought two farms. He bought the Dean Farm and the Turner Farm. One was a mailman, and the, I don't know what the other one did. But the, the, the 60 acres, he set my, his sister-in-law in that house. And mom and dad went in the old brick house. Now, the sister-in-law, she had the running water and the sewer, Elsie. And mom and dad had water, we had to run after it, and we had the outdoor privy until I was 18 years old. 
Where is that located? Right where that brick, right where the house is. The it's still there now. Right? Still there now. Yeah. And that's on um, Shockley Avenue, Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. Nine, nine, seven, nine, nine, five, five, five. Nine, five, five. Nine, five, five. Shockley Avenue. Yeah. 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 And it's still there now. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, so, if one of them from my sister getting married at fifty-two, would still be there today. Yeah. But when she got married in fifty-two to a man, well. I'm going to back up. Yeah. She was 18, 19, went one or two years at University of Minnesota, and then she took a civil service exam. She passed it. She got a job in the Pentagon. So she worked there, and that's where she met her husband. He was a uh, statistician or something of sort yeah, in, the, in the Pentagon. That's where they met. In 52, they came to get married. Well, Dad went on fast track. Had to have water and sewer. And the sewer is only about four or five feet under the ground because it's all downhill. See? Uh -huh. So we had water and sewer because of that, which we were all grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs> so before then, you were in the outhouse? Outhouse. So we ran after our water. Okay. We had the pump. And they had a wooden cover with slats. And in August, when it was so hot, you lay down there with your face between the cracks, and that cold air would just come up <laughs> and cool you off. Yes. Well, and uh, when we moved there, the first thing you built was a chicken barn. You did that on his own. He had help from uh, from uh, Gus. He worked. He was a man. He was a maintenance man at the St. Paul house. That's what his last name was. I have no idea anymore. Mm -hmm. But he helped them cut rafters, get the studs up, and then after that, it was the hog barn. Built that one with eight, eight little stalls in there, little boxes. And then he built a bigger one because we got bigger, more pigs. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was seventh, eighth grade. Ninth grade. Every night, Dad worked at the Plumlin Club. He was a waiter there all those years. And he, I had to go down and look at the pigs at between 9 and 10 if the sows were furrowing. What is the 8th eight, eight grade, ninth grader going to do with a sow that weighs four or five hundred pounds? <laughs> but I had to do that. You know, and I could get them apart. So, and we raised. Uh, Average litter was eight at that time, and the average weight what they wanted was 220. Now it's 280, 300. Uh, and, but we get them out at 250 to 240, and would raise maybe four. What we got eight sows. I made 64 pigs twice a year. <coughs> They were called mortgage lifters at that time <laughs> because, you know, the dairy cows, they supplied the, the money for the monthly feed uh, that they had to live on. But the hogs, they paid the mortgage. Mm -hmm. you, you got a big chunk of money at one time. And, uh, that went great until 1952, after my, my sister got married, August. We had maybe 300 hogs or so from wheel, from baby pigs up to market ready. Cholera sets in. Oh dear. You know what hog cholera is? <laughs> Bang, it was gone. Yeah. And that was my education for that year, for going to the University of Minnesota, University of Minnesota Farm School. <clears throat> so that, then I had to change direction. So then I. My uncles, you should have a cow or two. So they brought me a cow or two. <laughs> when I started farming, shipped five gallons of milk a day. Can you imagine? Five gallons. Now they're shipping <laughs> thousands, two thousand gallons a day. But I shipped five. And uh, then they, my dad rented the Oscar Roberts farm at that time. It was a barn and a house. No water in the house, no sewer in the house. Well, my 
father-in-law and my dad, we put water in the house in a sewer, and we put water in the barn, dug it in by hand, and I got the piping for the drinking pops piping down in the old brewery. I don't know if that limestone house is still there along the bank of the river. That's yeah. where they that's where they manufactured Minnesota number one, I think, whiskey. Yeah. There were there were all kinds of you know, when you're young and dumb, you don't <laughs> think about that stuff. They had these stacks of these envelopes that you put on the bottom. Oh, okay. You know, labels. 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 Oh. You know. Yeah. We just got all the pipe out of there for nothing. Just take it out. So that's where we got it. And then we had to straighten out that barn. And we got two uh, utility poles and lean up against the uh, west end of the barn because it was going that way. And we pulled the barn straight with a tractor and chain. And best we could, started with 20 cows. Boy, if I had 10 more, that'd be 30. <laughs> and that was standard, was 30 at that time. So, okay. Talk to Oscar Roberts. That's the, Oscar was the guy that owned it. Harold was his son. So, they furnished the gravel. And I had to furnish the cement and the labor. So, we built on it. We to it held 12 cows. And we bought the lumber. I paid for all that myself. Put in the barn cleaner, that I had to pay myself. Mm -hmm. We had a guy from Wisconsin, uh, uh, Bush, what was his name? Good question. From Jordan. No, Elmer. Elmer Bush. He sold Headland Barn Cleaner. Okay, so I bought one, and he got, a, he got a man out of Wisconsin to put in the cement work. Five days, we knocked out all the old cement and put in new cement and had this bar cleaner working. Mm -hmm. I paid for that. When I moved, I took the bar cleaner chain and the motor. That's all that came along. Everything's all stayed. And in those days, they stayed in your house, and you fed them, and they slept there. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. That was a different time. And, and we had Mary, what, five? Yeah. Mary was a baby. Mary was a baby. What was she? Number six. Number six. Yeah. That was the best move I made. And in 1968, farm economy picked up. And that's when we could save some money. We saved, even when we had eight children, we saved, still saved money. Because when they got a candy bar, you ask Jean Marie, one, one baby roof candy bar, had to divide that up equal. <laughs> Six kids could get a piece, and the one that did the cutting chose last. Oh, so they were pretty Oh, yeah. So they were pretty good that way. They learned to hurry. One try. We had a tough, with a tough goal for a while. But I wouldn't want to live any other way. And, I went, and if the good Lord would have, would have promised me another daughter, I would have went for it. <laughs> How many did you have of each? We have seven boys and two girls. Uh, okay. And the one son, he married into a family that had seven daughters. <laughs> there he is back there. Where's Joey? <laughs> She's one of seven girls and two boys. Okay, if Jean Marie is our second one. John standing up there is our third. Todd is our fourth. Joseph is our fifth. And six. <laughs> and six. And David is here. Is our seven. Uh, Joseph is here. Oh my gosh. And, oh, I forgot Joe. 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 Joe.
He snuck in without me seeing him. That's my favorite nephew. He calls me once or twice a year just to see how I'm doing. He sends me books to read. Yes. And I do read them. Oh, yes. And then our last, our, we thought I was our last, was Daniel, who lives in uh, Spokane, Washington. And then nine years later came Charles. Charles is not here. He's, he's still uh, slow. Every one of them went through a higher learning. I had four or five in the University of Minnesota. It was Mankato. It got so bad I thought I had to buy a car carrier. <laughs> because every weekend, go down there and get a car started. Or bring it home. Now, when you back when you um, were with the pigs, you said you went, went in at nine or ten at night, and you had to go um, just look at them. Just look at them. See that they're all right. See, if they're furrowing, I don't know if I'm supposed to call them. <laughs> he never told me that. Oh, <laughs> I, I think maybe he thought I could take a gate and separate them. Separate them. Yeah, and that's the job. So what happened when you forgot to do that? Didn't you one time you forgot? I, I remember did. that. I remember that. It was 1.30. He came going down to the park. He knew I wasn't there. I don't know how. He got my hind end out of bed and we went down. I don't know if we separated pigs or not. That I don't know. I can't remember that. I don't think I... The way the strap went out of focus. We hit it on so that yeah. It was... After that, after you learned by getting up at 1.30 in the morning. Yes. After that, it wasn't a problem? It was no problem. <laughs> you remember that. You know, I think you've got to remember the era in the 40s. Yeah. They just came out of the Depression. No money. My dad worked at Farm Balting, and he came home and remembered when one man wanted to work there, and he could have, but he needed an advance on his pay so he could buy himself a pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. And when Dad was waiting in the public cafe in the early 40s, these bums, tramps, whatever you want to call them, they'd come in and they'd want newspaper. So in the wintertime, open their coat, cut paper, mm -hmm. yeah. and around them to keep warm. Yes. Do you remember uh, you were prohibition? You said you were still you were working. No, your, your parents were working, yes. right? He uh, crossed the river at the tri Y, up on the bluff ways. When we were kids, eighteen, that was the roller skating rink. Oh, yeah. But when Dad was, moved was here, the, the basement was the bar and the slot machines, and on up top was dance floor. It was quite a place during the, before Young Doll moved in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When Young Doll got in, everything was gone. Yeah. But it took about five years to get them out. <coughs> it didn't happen overnight. It did not happen overnight. Did you ever play um, slot machines? <laughs> My mother and dad were working in the Pullman. The mother was a waitress. This was a slot machine era. And here there was a big one standing about this high, like this here. I was maybe five or six. And down at the bottom was a cup. And it was full of nickels. And I. Come over here. He said, You can have those. Can I have? Them? Yeah. Somebody put a nickel in, pulled a handle, and a spit, and he walked away. So there was maybe. Two, three dollars, what? Takes 20 nickels for a dollar. So, you know, it takes a handful, you've got two dollars. It ain't much money now. It was a tremendous amount at that time. Yeah, yeah. Because you could have got a hamburger for a dime. Yes. Fries. I don't know if they even serve fries there. <laughs> American fries, yeah, but not, not French fries. They came in, they came in with the. Uh, 
with the fast food with the yeah. time set. McDonald's. Gary, yeah. 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 we uh, yeah. right. yeah. 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 She worked. Yeah, she worked. Oh, the try. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The try one. I think that's when the French rice came in about that time when it started. And, they, yeah. and then Powers had that drive in down here. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. And Mother went, that guy was maybe three, four. And he was crying. He brought him home by us. He was crying. And crying. He wanted to go to Howard Drive In because at that time, the little ones got a little ice cream cone. Yes. What about this? Just a teeny yes. little thing. A little drop of ice cream on top of it. And it would not come out until it was gone. Yeah. <laughs> Were those free? Free. Yes. They gave those free. They gave those free. In 1971, you could buy 11 dilly bars for a dollar. Yeah. Oh Think about oh, inflation. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're two, three, four bucks to one of those. Oh, yeah. The Stemmer's feed mill. It, it used to be the Apple River Valley Mill along the tracks. And we could get Rock Spring popped there. A dollar a case for 24 bottles, and the case cost a dollar. So you only had that one time. Then the next time you bring the case back with the empties, then you could just uh, get a new one. And that lasts maybe a week at our house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that soft drink. It was metered out, though. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. But it was Rock Spring, and then it was in little glass bottles. Mm -hmm. But their orange and their cream soda and their grape was to die for. I know, grape, too. I was yeah. 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 Oh, it was they were great. Yeah. 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 So your, your parents would allow you to drink pop then? When I was growing up, no, we never no. had pop. No, no. It never. Had to be a uh -uh. It was no holiday. Fourth of July, maybe Memorial maybe. if they were done with the planting. Yeah. Otherwise, we didn't have pop. But either. my kids grew up with pop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. limited. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know. That. <laughs> and then well, we, it was limited, very limited. <laughs> I picked up the uh, malt sprouts at the raw malt. Done that for twenty. 20 some odd years, 25 years maybe. Mm -hmm. Four o'clock every day down to the malt house. Sunday Five, every day. Every day. Five, six wheelbarrows full of malt sprouts. I bring them home, feed them to the steers up here, and the rest go to the cattle. Every day oh. they got fresh malt sprouts. Wow. And they eat them up. So they let you just go there and take that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You had to, they had to know who you were. <laughs> Not, we, my dad never signed a contract or anything. That was word of mouth, and I've done that for 20 some odd years. Yes, and now uh, they were supposed to, they had a, a catch piece, a big uh, sieve, this and about five feet. What they would do is they would lift it up and let it go down the sewer and then go to the river. And when it got to the river, the carp just boiled the water. Oh. They ate, they fed. They, and otherwise, it would be probably a two and a half ton truck every other day. Mm -hmm. There was so much uh, sprouts. Eating. The barley was put on a screen this wide, so, and they had moistened it, and it was sprout. When they had sprouts on, they'd tip them wash them off with water, and then repair them. Tell them about when you went down and John, about John. With the oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> like five years old. We <laughs> were milking cows. This was on a, on a rainy day, and somebody broke my watch. my watch glass, and it was laying on the ball tank. And everybody got blamed for it. <laughs> that way you made no mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and it rained and rained. So I went alone down to Stemmer's, got in the driveway, got out of the truck, and turned around. This kid coming up the driveway. John! It looks like my kid, he said. It was John. He walked. Uh, over a mile, 
almost two miles. Well, we're in the sand gravel, the down Chalkabee Avenue, all the way down Chalkabee Avenue to Main Street to go to the South Stemmer Mill. That's quite a little mm -hmm. yeah, trip. Yeah, quite a jump. He was maybe five, six. Oh, How old were you, John? Five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> Determination. <laughs> Before the age of reason. <laughs> Yeah, I told you about the time we walked under the bridge. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Not here. Yeah. Didn't I tell you that? No, 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 no. no, no. We got any six, seven, eight-year-olds? No, don't give them that idea. <laughs> <laughs> we were six to about 13 ages. Maybe eight of us. We had our own little gang in town. Gang. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody thought it'd be a good idea to walk under the bridge in those oh, yeah. girders. Mm -hmm. uh, the old Home Street. Ones. On Home yeah. Street, you know, which we did. And, you know, you get to that upright and you had to bounce yourself around so you wouldn't fall and you kind of like this into the next one. And uh, that news got home before we did. Usually does when you're doing something. After that, they put a fence up. So you could, you know, you could just almost walk from, from the ground to the piling, huh. and then get on, walk over. Should thank your guardian angel for still here to tell the story. Right. It could be in the river. Yeah. Did you see Indy and Minnie? I yes, I can remember her, but what to visualize what she looked like, I can't. But they did have teepees down the along the old Indian road. That's what we called it. Yeah. It's also called Lovers Lane, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> Definitely. And it's all under water. Yeah. You go down oh, yes. far east. I think it's about where that old hotel, oh. limestone hotel, stood on the bank. And there it went north. And you would come out by Zebra Peterson. Yeah. Oh, right. By a yeah. fine cloud drive. Right, or, or, right. Uh, and see, and the uh, hamburger place. Yes. But we went on our bicycles, we four or five of us, and there were about three, four teepees. Here and here and here. And the Indian chiefs they had this regalia, you know, with the feathers all the way down. Mm -hmm. wow. well, you know, and we just got through seeing a half long Cassidy one or a <laughs> Tom Mix and we seen the Indians and our heart was Turn around and run back like Oh, yes. No. How did you get your um, hogs or the piglets, I guess? Where did you get them from? Well, my dad built this one barn, and my uncles, his brother in laws, they came down and they said, You should have some pigs here. Yeah, that'd be nice, but I don't have any. <laughs> I don't have any money for them. Well, the next day they came down with a, a litter of pigs. Oh. Eight or nine. That's fine, but I don't have anything to feed them. <laughs> so the next day they came with a pickup load of corn, pure corn, about 25, 30 bushel. And that was a start. Uh, during those years, they had, every Monday, they'd have what they call a fair. And they'd congregate around the St. Paul house where farmers would come in with pickup trucks and little pigs in them. And every Monday, they'd, you know, half a dozen, dozen trucks come in with pigs and they'd barter and sell them. Small, small towns did that. I know yeah, Chester did that. Chester did that too. After you lost all the pigs to cholera, did you ever get them started in with pigs or just corn? Just corn. Yeah. It takes a number of years. I think seven, seven years, years. Because it goes into the ground. Yeah, it took so seven years. So it takes that long before you could reestablish it. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. Then we bought, we bought baby pigs after that to raise from down here at 4th Street. Uh, the, the roads, you know, like Shockby Avenue, uh, streets along there, were they paved? No, the pavement stopped at Norman Huey's property. Oh. Which is uh, between Market and Minnesota Street. Yeah. 
Yeah. Market and Minnesota Street. Yeah. Yeah. Market, no, Market is the one east, isn't it? West. Huey lived in that house that's on it's Jack the Avenue. Yes. Yeah, between true. those two streets. They, and then they built one for Grandma Sunheimer to live in. She was, <coughs> I believe she was part Indian. She was part Indian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then her uncle, now this is told to me by Bobby. In New Orleans? Yeah. He, he was hung at New Orleans. Was, wow. her, was her uncle? I, I can't swear to it. Mm -hmm. But there was talk, mm -hmm. you know, when you're eight, ten years old, the ears go up. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't always hear what they're supposed to yeah. hear in the right order. Yeah. You know, but, yeah. Yeah. Do, yeah. So you went to school at St. Mary's. Right. What do you remember about that? One day I didn't go to school. <laughs> we were living on 4th Street. I didn't go to school that day. I didn't want to go. Okay, I said that. Next day I want an excuse. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you an excuse to go to school anyway. But I did. And the nun asked me why I wasn't there yesterday. Why weren't you there yesterday? We'll stand in the hall until you remember. <laughs> I stood there all day long. <laughs> she gave up after a while. I never did tell no. But those years, in the, in, in the Catholic grade school, they had, the nuns had this in their head, that everybody had to have a hobby. So you made a scrapbook, you did this, you did, I did wood carving. You know, I had a donkey and I had a, a squirrel, a Mexican sitting there. Yeah, and I had six or eight or nine of those carvings. Oh, and then the eighth grade, I believe. And then they were gone. And I was in high school one day when mom called, supposed to stop at the convent. Here they had all those carvings in a box. They shipped them around to all their uh, other schools. Other schools that were uh, mm -hmm. what were they? Notre Dame nuns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kids can do, I still have them today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I didn't use any softwood, I used pine, you know, and my, I, Dad bought me a, an X-Acto knife set, I still have it today, when I carved all these, and I had diagrams of them, and cut them out with a combing saw, you know, mm -hmm. then, you know and then carve it out. I should have brought them along. So, <laughs> so, so because of that, then they took them because they wanted to teach other people? Yes, other see. kids. What, what can be done if you put your mind to it? Mm -hmm. You didn't have TV. Right. You know, Some of them would carve in ivory soap, which is a softer. Yeah. 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 Oh, we had a nun that could carve soap, ivory soap. <sighs> Beautiful. And you wanted to do it, all you had is soap flakes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you had. And no. We do not buy ivory soap. We got to buy lava or life boy. Life boy. They were hard as rock. So it didn't wear down. Lava had a lot of grit in it. You could really clean yourself up. Life boy. Do you remember what the name was? They just put the grit in the toothpaste. No. Yeah, not toothpaste. Dad. Dad. But you know, those years. Hygiene was not was not stressed upon. It was not stressed upon, except in the comic strips on Sunday papers. They'd have a little comic strip there. It was called B.O. <laughs> you have B.O. No, I don't have B.O. You have no. I don't, I have B.O. Yeah, that was random. Maybe you were too. <laughs> so you got to go back and look at them all. Yeah, yeah I have to look at them. My question is: So, did you take um, baths once a week? Yeah. Once a week. Whether you need it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Usually Saturday night. Saturday, Saturday night. night. I wonder why we got dark elbows and black knuckles, and that's because. Yeah, the heat up. My mother first when they moved into that brick house. Her first stove. I still have the stove. A wood-fired range, one of the last ones that was made by the Shockaby Stove Company. Okay. I've still got the stove today, and she 
cooked on that, and she baked bread on that. I burnt my arm on there tremendously here because it was so hot. There was no protection, you know. And then after that, uh, Duke, he got to know Duke Phelps, and Duke Phelps get, got him into a, a propane gas stove. So he got that. But only one bottle of gas. And Dad says, well, I should have two. No. Mother would had to make bread every week for Dad. He wouldn't buy, he wouldn't eat bought bread. So, when she'd run out of gas, they had to call Duke. Duke was up there within 10 minutes, and then he would sit around and wait for the bread to get done. <laughs> he'd either have a loaf of bread with Dad. And that's right, he did. He did that for years. Dad wanted him to drop another tank there so I can change it. No, 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 no. <laughs> he was a fine man. Yes. Oh. In grade school. Every boy had to have a tie. Yeah. So mother put me into a polo shirt. No, there was no collar, you know, just to down here. So what they did, the nuns did. They got tray paper. They made a tie that was this big. <laughs> Any way you can ridicule those kids, it's fair game. Yes. You got to hate those nuns. Yes. Just oh, and I was maybe in the third grade. Uh, I suppose I was standing too close to the batter, and I got one along the ear, and my ear bled. They took me up to that little room. Nobody ever went up there but the nuns. Yeah, I know you know, that's special. They took me up there and they washed me up. How am I all right? Yeah, I can hear, I can, you know. Never told anybody about it. You know, and after that, I stuttered. And I mean, I stuttered for, until after we got married. She never noticed, but you, when you stutter bad, real into it. You form it in your mind words that come out that you can say without stuttering. Sure. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then that, she got me through that. Did you go take a uh, trip with a priest to. Oh, Chicago? yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was a private to driver, Father Burton. Okay. From the same. St. Mary's, St. Mary's. Burns. 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 Yeah. Burns. Yeah. Father Burns. Okay. I think he's yeah. in your shock of a book, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. But not what he all did. I, would, I drove him out to Graceville. That one morning, the house was never locked. Came in upstairs, got me out of bed about 6 in the morning. We're going someplace. So I get down. Mom says, oh, you're with a priest. You're wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was his private yeah. driver. You were a dri driver for his He for could him. drive? He could drive. But... Doctor's orders, nothing where he could stressful. Nothing long. I'm driving him into St. Paul, he, a Christmas and a Thanksgiving, I remember. And his relatives, one was a FBI agent during the wartime, then he'd tell me what they all did, you know. Mm -hmm. His wife was a little on the heavy side, and this Nazi agent that they were trying to catch had a preference for women that were a little on the bulky side. <laughs> and she got him and they took oh. care of the job. Oh. And, oh yes. And then when we were in 52, I think, was, was that the uh, Republican convention yeah, in, yes. in, in yes. Chicago? I and two other boys, can't remember their names, we drove them to Chicago. And he knew Chicago by the back of his hand. So the first day, we slept on Grant Park, pulled the, pulled the car on the grass. We had blankets, we slept on the grass, and he slept in the car. Right there. Right there. And one night, it was the first night, close to my there. Police are there, cops are there. I wanted to ask him, well, you listen to what's going on. And we were there for four nights in that park, and he came every night to check on us. In the morning, we would get up and go to Union Station. He had a dime he could put into a pay toilet. We had to use the regular one, see. We'd wash up there. And then after that, we'd go down to the market 
where all the stores, grocery stores, would come in every day for their produce. And he knew everybody. That was anybody there. We'd get up on this boardwalk and he'd say, you pick up whatever you want to eat. And we did. Carton of milk, apple, orange, bread, meat, whatever you wanted for the day. Every day. And they just give it to you? He warlorded over those people. <laughs> he leaned on them. He leaned on them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yes. You're the one. He was, and he had me ready for the priesthood. He had me ready for the priesthood. Went down to Nazareth Hall, which is Northwestern University now. Yeah. Was in there just this past month. That church is beautiful. Yes. Stations are cross are on it. It belongs to a non denominational uh, religion. Mm -hmm. uh, what's his name? The, uh, he was there. Graham. Billy Graham. Oh, Billy. Billy Graham. Oh, yeah. He started it there. Oh. Yeah, a beautiful church. Yeah, the and, holy water fountain is yeah. formed into the wall. He showed me all around mm -hmm. how it's all going to be and we went up to uh, Collegeville. He had me all ready to go to the priesthood. And then the good Lord intervened. Uh, <laughs> he died. He died. And the money dried up. Got to lean on people. You know? yeah. And he get what he wanted. He was so a fine man. Been, you could have been a priest. Yeah, right. He died. <laughs> the sermons would be too long. Yeah. Right? Here today. Yeah, I drove them all around Minnesota. Went to Victoria for some kind of a deal. And uh, oh, where else did we go? Went out, a lot out. And then he would point out the towns at that time. Friendly towards Catholic or not. No Catholic will be allowed there. No Catholic will be allowed there. Oh, yeah. oh yes. It's a it change. Yeah. <laughs> For the better. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so I, I got, to get me back along far enough, I, first we lived in Chaska when Dad moved up. No. And there was a house right on the, what is that, Chestnut, right down it. Two more houses, and then you had the river. And this is according to my mother. I was playing in the sand and the gravel with my trucks, and I went to sleep. And a UPS man, wasn't UPS at that time, he brought me in the house, sleeping out on the road. <laughs> mother would be in jail if they'd have found me. Right. <laughs> but at that time, was kids would be kids, and the population was. Shocked we had maybe, did they have a thousand people at that oh, time? Maybe oh, yes. maybe what right years there. are we talking about here? 39, 40. When were you born, in other words? Yeah, I was born in 34. 34, okay. Up in Dorsey, and they moved down here and started in first grade, and that would have been six years old. <clears throat> six would be 1940. Yeah. Lived in Shockley Avenue, or on Forth in Somerville. Mm -hmm. Judge Conley lived there. <coughs> Judge Rarity. Oh, what? Seven hours lived over there. Yeah. They always lived down there. <laughs> They're all in their little communities. <coughs> <coughs> They're all, you know, with oh. <coughs> their lush company. Yeah. 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 Did you do remember? Um, so you, when you were up on uh, Shockby Avenue, you went to school at that time still at St. Mary's. Mary's. I walked. You walked? Yeah. I walked. I don't know if it was a mile or not. Get a ride? No way. You, you walk. You've got chef's ponies. You use them. If you get tired of walking, you run a little bit. That's the answer. Yeah. And now they do it for exercise. I had to do it because I had to. And all 12 years uh -huh. of walking to school. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So after St. Mary's, then you went to the old high school, the old high school, yeah. which is the um, right across from St. Mary's. Right across from St. Mary's. I still got my graduation picture mm -hmm. right there. I stand. 
<laughs> what do you remember about the, um, going into that public school there? Chaos. Oh yeah. Under the nuns' care, you were you were under control at all times. You told the mark. You didn't run. You didn't do this. You didn't, didn't do, talk in the halls. You didn't talk in the halls. There it was chaos, you know. And then every hour you changed subjects, you know, changed rooms. Yeah. That was a little bit to get uh, used to. To used to. Yeah. Took about three weeks. The first strange. We had 90, 90 some kids in that freshman year, and they had them three grades. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. <laughs> and it took about 30 seconds for the kids to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> they had everybody in, you know, ordered according to their grade ability. Yeah. The poor learners were here, and the middle ones are here, and the better ones are here. Yeah. The next day, they were all jumbled over. You bet. My favorite one was algebra. <coughs> we had a teacher by the name of Jakulski. Oh. He was a... During World War II, he was a radar operator. He wrote backwards on the screen so those on the other side could read it. And then he would, we had him talking about the episodes during World War II. He'd get out in the morning and it would be all full of these black uh, shells that exploded. You know. And then he went on and on and on. And we were just all oh, ears. And about six weeks later, he must have got it from principal, principal Grace Sweeney. He came in and he banged the books on the desk. The honeymoon is over. <laughs> and it was. And it was. Yeah, once in a while we get him on the World War II, you know. So in other words, you would try to get him off top. Well, yeah, but we wanted this adventure. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it, it, the adventure is right. And I loved algebra. I had a hard time with word problems, but I could work the. With the other part. You know, I yeah, I could come with the with all the shooty cues, you know, and they got the brackets, and then they got the round things, and the numbers in there, and then next they got one, and they come out with three at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I never could figure that out. But, uh, no. Do you remember downtown Sasabee? Do you remember what it would look like? Yes. Little six bar. Well, that's gone. That was when you come right off the bridge. That was a little six bar. That was Chief Shockaby. And right to the north was Clemmie's Hamburger. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. You did Clemmie's Hamburger. Yeah, that was excellent. That was like, a, that was like White Castle yesterday. <laughs> and then Hanson's Ice Cream Parlor. They, they made their own ice cream. And they had a soft serve. You could get a nickel on a cone like this, like the Dairy Queens would be. Mm. But they were better than the Dairy Queens. Man, mm. you could buy a, ice, uh, a, a Sunday flute for 15 cents, but you didn't have 15 cents. Mm. You know? And then down was Rexall Drug. There was a bar in there and a beauty shop, Rexall Drug, and another shop. Strunks was down another. And, but Murray's was on the corner, mm -hmm. yeah, five right. dime and a dollar or not. Burnt out? Yeah, burnt out. And across the street, Matt Barron's, Art Barron's was the, uh, next to the street. Yeah, yeah they were the over there, Art was here. And then Vince Crumpfus was a shoe repair man, and he also sold shoes. And then we had the bakery mm -hmm. and the theater. Mm -hmm. the jewelry store. Norm Hewitt had the jewelry store. And in the in the showcase in the when you went into the theater, he had a glass display where he would display his jewelry that oh. for young people want to see it by a diamond ring or whatever. God forget. <laughs> and then who was the bar right next to the Tyson's bar? There was a bar in Tyson's. Tyson's. Yeah. 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 And then Cookie yeah, Wollenhauer had a meat market. Yeah. Yeah. And then Harry Louie had the, on the corner, Jonas Cafe was 
Harold Louis was on the corner, Jonas Cafe was here, and then there was a, a realtor there. In 52, I was up on top, showing my snow off the roof, because it was just deep. I washed, there in 52, I washed dishes at Jonas Cafe, for yeah. they were putting in the uh, telephone, people were coming in, putting new power lines up, new power poles. And every one of those characters ordered T-bone steaks. <laughs> uh, go on, bust everything off, go back, wash them, and check your forks because eggs like to stick in between the tines. <laughs> Danny would tell me that. <laughs> uh, Danny and Lance were wonderful people. <laughs> and Lee Jelly. I don't know if you guys remember Gordon. Gordon. Yes. Gordon yeah. Yeah. Very well. Yes. He played in the Canadian Football League, you know. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, he did. In the basement, he had a regular workout room where he had all the lifts in the you know, bars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we did, I did that about six weeks, yeah. wash dishes. And then I got a job washing dishes in the St. Paul house. But you've been there since you were long. Well, no, I guess not. No, that burnt down. I don't remember yeah. when that burnt down. Yeah, he said he was one Then they had a, they built a new addition on in the same pile house called the Rosewood Room. Mm -hmm. With the dark lights, they had one, two, three lifts. And the evening, it looked beautiful back there. Where you want to take your best girl and take her out and really impress her. <laughs> <laughs> you go in there in the daytime. What the heck is just a piece of wood back there? <laughs> <laughs> Remember the bowling alley? Really? That's where the bowling alley was. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they uh, they didn't have automatic pin setters at that time. No. I don't know when they came in, but those pins were heavy. <laughs> and they hurt. You had to get up out of the way when that ball came and bounced around. Yeah. So you had to put that um, ball off again. I mean, the yeah, you put the pins in there and then jump up on top. Then get out of the way for the next one to come. Yeah. <laughs>
It doesn't take long to like a bunch of chickens jumping in that pack of cigarettes. Oh. Oh, yes. The truckers kept the girls in cigarettes. <laughs> Amen. And it was break time, oh, break time, everybody got a cigarette. And they smoked it then until maybe 15 minutes and they had to go back to work. Yeah. I got to know some of those girls. By the face, pretty good. You know? One year I worked in their garden. They, they hired some young oh. people to work there. 75 cents an hour I made there. That was good. good yes. Because I was trying to make 25 with babysitting. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I got 25 cents for. Wash his dishes. Yeah. So they, for some reason, that one year at least they hired people rather than just the gals. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe they. Maybe they didn't have an outside person yes. to monitor you. Yeah. yeah. Because they did chickens, they did cows, they did pigs. They I think they had babies. horses at one time. Mm -hmm. Did they do honey? The what? Did they do honey? Did they have bees? I don't know. No, I don't think so. No, I don't believe they ever did. But towards the end, that's all they had with potatoes. But I think they had carrots and onions. You know, garden fruit. Yeah. yeah. And that, the garden was where the reformatory is now. Right, that's correct. Yeah, the yes. garden was there. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, <I know. coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, was, what was the man's name? Nick Tilson. What? The, the guy that ran the reformatory. Oh, the man, the so outside man that. I worked for, it was a Matt Noterman that was our supervisor. Oh, okay. No, well, this is back in the 40s. Yeah. yeah. Early. Because Dad planted apple trees. And he got this guy to come out and trim them or whatever. I know Dad got him to know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he did. See, <clears throat> Dad had quite an orchard. Six or eight apple trees, three or four plums, <clears throat> grape. And then when they built a school across the road, the boys, they had run over after school, climb over the fence, the fence would squeak, uh, and Grandma was waiting for them one day. <laughs> and she says, boys, use the gate. Don't climb over the fence, you just break it down. Just use the gate and you can have all the apples you want. <laughs> they never came back. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted her to run after them with a group and then fall, and then they would laugh. Oh. Oh, I've been there. Oh, yes. That was what the school was still what, Yeah, the first few years, yes. Do you remember when that happened? When we used, that was your land, was it? Yes, the 60 acres. They bought 10 acres. Where was that? Yeah, and, uh, Pearson, Pearson School. Pearson School. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Uh, that was, they built that. We moved in 71. Must have been built in 69. 69. 68. Yeah. Well, yeah. in the paper the last Because we had a dog, oh, a puppy. 69. 69. Okay. We had a puppy. One half grown puppy. When that school bell rang, he was gone up to the school. So you got to go up and get him, bring him back home. Then when the bell rang again, he was gone. Well, that can't go on. You got to get rid of the dog. <laughs> and in those years, when you got rid of a dog, you got rid of a dog. Yeah, rid of the they went to the farm. <laughs> they went to the farm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I only had one. Well, I have two dogs. Uh, oh, Sheppy. Sheppy dog. Sheppy dog with this tall, black tail, black, brown over the eyes. I could go out and cultivate corn with my tractor, and he'd go up and down, up and down, up and down. And after an hour, he would sit, lay on the end of the field. And I'd continue, and then he'd move over to the last row. And then, you know, then at noon, we'd get up and go home to eat, then come back at 1 o'clock and start all over again. Yeah. When you went to school, like at St. Mary's, did you have lunch there at St. Mary's, or you went home? No. We ate. You know, we ate at the public school. Did you? Public oh, school. Really? Yes. You either bring your lunch, or if you had 50 cents, 10 cents a day to eat at the public school. 10 oh, cents really? a day? Yes. You go over there, oh, you had 
Peanut butter sandwiches. Peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter sandwiches. Peanut butter sandwiches. You what? Eat either corn or spaghetti or peas and a jug of milk. There was no choice. Yeah. The choice is what, what you got there is what you're going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the like same it or not. Make your choice. Did your you, did you used to um, pay and do that, or did you bring it from home? No, they, you bought a ticket. 50 cents, you gave it to the nun, and that gave you for a week. For a week. Yeah. Yeah. We went over there and they came back on your honor system. St. Mary's did not have a lunch program, obviously. No, no, they did. So, no, no. Yeah, later on, I don't remember that. When our kids were so in school, yeah. so, so, in other words, you were as at you were a school at St. Mary's, yes. but you could go over They're just across the street. Yeah, you'd go over there and eat, and then come back. But you eat there too. We eat there too. Oh yes. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's what I remember anyway. You know, but. They never brought it to us. Yeah. We had to go to it. And then sometime down the road it it increased to uh, fifteen or twenty cents a day. That was like <laughs> that was like the nickel coffee at the Scott County drug. They had six, eight guys drinking coffee all day long for a nickel. And then they doubled the price to a dime. <laughs> Lord. How can we afford that dime? Well, in Jelly's Cafe, too, if you were just going to have coffee or a drink, you had to sit at the counter. If you were in a booth, they would say, you sit at the counter. Yeah, it took because a dollar. they would sit there, you know. It yeah, took a dollar to yeah. sit in the booth. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, and my dad's job, well, after he was from the slot machines, when that went away, then he got to be a waiter in the, in the cafe part. And the till was over here, the restaurant doors were here, and the till was here, and he was over here. His job was to make sure that nobody went out that door without stopping at the <coughs> till for a second. Because yeah. a lot of them went out. Uh -huh. That's what happened. Who am I going to ask? <laughs> John, who <laughs> me? In 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 in, in uh, Boston, in the 30, 40, that big nightclub that burnt down and 400 people got burnt up. They had all the bar, the outside doors barred to keep people from sneaking out without paying. Is that the cotton club? The cotton club, I think. Then after that. All the doors had to open out. out yeah. Before that, the doors opened in. Yeah. Oh. People couldn't get out. Oh. Yeah. Couldn't get out. Yeah. They couldn't open the door. They kept pushing and pushing. And they they yeah. got trampled to death. Yeah. 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 There's a few things I remember. Yeah, there's <laughs> interesting things that I do remember. Yeah. All right, are there any, the other thing you want to do, we don't have a lot more time, <laughs> but, I, um, but I really enjoy because the, the stories are so interesting. But I wonder, does anybody other people have questions here about any questions for him? Just a personal one. I went to school with a young man named Clyde. Was that a relative? Clyde? Clyde. Oh, my brother. younger brother. Your younger brother. Yep. I thought so. You. Age-wise, yeah. My mother had a hard time at birthdays. <laughs> Clyde and Clyde. Kay. Their birthdays were on different days than what they actually were for most of their life <laughs> until they got married and got their birth certificates. Oh, 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 and they finished. Oh, oh, oh. My birthday on my birth certificate is baby born alive. Not baby born dead. Baby <laughs> born alive. So I celebrate my birthday on the 3rd. It doesn't even say baby boy. It says baby Just born alive. And the doctor seen me 28 days after I was born. We were way up there they had to kick. They had to cut the trees down to find them first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Clyde would be maybe seventy-eight or seventy-seven. Yeah. 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 In that neighborhood. Yeah. Kay was a year or two younger. Depending on when his birthday yeah. fell. Yeah. Any stories <laughs> about Hitler? Yeah. 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 What's okay? What was your question? Any stories about Hillary from the crowd? <laughs> Oh, yes. I want to know if you remember any of the nuns that you were talking Sister about. Sister Nicolette. 
Oh, oh, seven oh, feet tall in the bottom. Yeah, you're a bony finger. Chief points, she had this big bony finger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but after we got through grade school, her, out, she was the best teacher we oh, ever yes, she was. Absolutely. No messing around. Yeah. Um, but do you remember the nun that Mary said David? carved, carved the, um, soap? No. It, it, was it Marcita? Sister Marcita? Was that her? She had such artistic hands. Yeah. That was the art teacher. Yeah. Oh. And then Sister Mary David was the yes. uh, music teacher. Yes. Oh. I don't remember her. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, yeah. 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 She's a cute little thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know who she is? No. Okay. Talk to Nancy. Nancy Schmidt. Nancy Metcalf. Oh, really? Yeah. Hello. Nancy. Nancy. Yeah, Nancy Metcalf. Your father's name was John? Yes, yes. I just got a picture, Dad. Yes. You know, pass that over to you. I got our grad, our graduation dance. Yeah, I got yeah. that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I got a hit upstairs in the. How about the You got to come out sometimes. <laughs> yes. That's right. Isn't that neat? Oh, wow. He was my first date. Oh. Okay. I was a tomboy. Oh. <laughs> Not interested in boys. Yeah. As far as boy, well, you look pretty darn good there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he asked me for a date. Huh. Well, that was a, yeah. <laughs> and I thought I'd try it. She was the nicest person. Such a gentleman. Oh. So kind. Oh. <laughs> for a good year. He was yeah. perfect. Yeah. 61 years. 60. How many years? 61 Oh yeah, we're 61 in April. Next Friday. Next Friday. We celebrated last year. And that guy and his wife paid for everything. That's nice. And I'm guessing yeah. Oh, Donald Lee, yes. Yes, okay. John Miles Lee. My dad was deputy sheriff. Yes. 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 I hope you didn't know him real well. I had a motorbike that I got from Long Island. Dad got it for me. And I'd ride at the school and I'd park it in the county garage. Right next to the jail and the sheriff's house, I put it in there and be safe. I'm going to do that. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Things change. Oh, they, let you, they let you do that? Yes. I never asked. They just did it. Oh, you just did it? They just did it. You yeah. didn't figure anybody break into the sheriff's house. No. <laughs> Got a tour of the jail. Thanks. That's a ball with it. Paul Murmurstrup and his dad was chairman? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm trying to think of his name. I yeah, Paul, yes. I know. Chef Word. Yeah. Uh, John. Yeah. John Murmurstrup. John. John? John? Yeah, okay. John. John. Yeah, and then Rick Shorter. Rick Shorter was a deputy, and then he. Yeah, and then he became sheriff. And, and then he had deputy. those tumbling pigeons. Yep. Up yes. there on, on Lewis and Shockby <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> They'd go way up there until all the sight, and then you start. Falling down. Oh, they get down yes. 30 feet and then they take off. I just remembered he had pigeons that he yeah. took to show us. He was a well-known. Yes. You know, those guys could have been just by talking. When was the last time you were in the brick house on Shackley Avenue? Last time we were in the brick house on Shackley Avenue? Uh, 1978, his mother passed away. Mother passed away. Okay. And then it was yeah, I guess. It, first, it, it had owners in it for a while, and then it sat empty for a while. Yeah. And then his family moved in it and really trashed it. It is terrible looking. Yeah, yes. and now I think another family's in it and maybe taking care of it. it but it got really trashed. Somebody just said that they painted the outside of the building white, which is kind of too bad. It is shock of a brick. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of yeah. Yeah. It's on historical side. Yes, it is. Yeah. That house was hot as the devil <laughs> in the summer and cold oh, as can be in the winter. Yeah. 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 Y
a furnace here, coal or wood, but one grade and twice morning coal and ash, and then if it ignites in that furnace and flames come up about this high, the mother would get the dish and put water in put it up. So during the winter time, when you're sleeping, it must be really cold. Frost on the, on the, on the window and on the ceiling. Because there was just one register in the floor. The heat would go up. But my room wasn't there. Mine was the one over. So, Can you tell me what the borders of your, your Cape Park property were? Uh, you said Pearson School was part of it, but what, what were the other borders of the property? Like, did it go down to Marshall Road? Yeah, did you go as far as Marshall? No, 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 no. We went down as far as Egan's. Egan's? Nam Gay? My dad was a fire pump. <laughs> Went to the army down here on Oscar Roberts' fire. And somebody, would, Mom would call, Dad's got the fire burning and it's heading towards Egan's. Got to put it out. <laughs> So we get up there with rakes and shovels and break it out. Yeah, what was it, maybe a good block to the east? Or a block uh, and a half to the east to Egan's? Our property... How much land was on the south side? 60 on the south side, 20 on the north side. Where that gravel road, I don't think it's blacktop, where that Russian church is. <coughs> yeah, that's okay. Okay. Uh, Is that's that a, I think it is. That's, that's the property line. That road is the property line. Okay, yeah. Nineteen and some acres. That was wrong. Okay. Numb. And then on the other side was what? Okay. On west side, how far? To the west. Yeah. Well. To the west. Well, oh, I mean, Benutkas no, lived was the neighbors. Yeah. That's that right next door. Border. Yeah. That's right there. Yeah. And, and that went down to the railroad track. Down yeah. To the railroad yeah. track. Yeah. See, in that, that time, they had, had animals, and the railroad was responsible for keeping it fence up. If the cattle got out through that fence, it was a railroad's problem. They had to come and repair the fence. Mm -hmm. That was a set of tracks that isn't there anymore. The Milwaukee Road. No, they're all gone. Yeah. But just in the south of Fort Yeah. But there used to be a lot of water in there, too. Was there kind of a gravel pit at one time down in that north end? That was all gravel pit. Okay. Shock Bay Avenue was one gravel pit from Norman Huey's. Jack Wormer's Crooked had gravel pit on his where Manuka and that church was. We had one humongous big gravel pit that filled up with the water this time of the year. And I was dra dragging railroad ties down to make a raft. Dad was up by the hog barn watching. He says, you know, you can get a 50 gallon barrel, that, that'll float. Okay. I was maybe eight, ten. So I get that in the water and I get on it. You know what happened? Yeah. <laughs> no, I couldn't. I can't swim, but I could stand up in it. Yeah. yeah. That was underwater every spring. See, and then all the way on Chakwe Avenue North, that was all little gravel pits that dug off by hand those years because they were remodeling a couple of buildings. And they were digging, and they come up with all this rubbish. Why did that all come? Well, I said they brought in two skill schools from Lydia, and they made apartments out of it. And all the refuse went into that pit, and they covered her over. Mm -hmm. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're, They're all day. over town like that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. To go to Bill. Yeah. They had a dump site up where St. John's New Church is. <laughs> that was a dump site. I mean, refuse, whatever you want to get rid of was in there. I think it was north of 6th Street. Yeah, there is. 8th and 4th. 8th and 4th. Yes, yes. yes. That, I remember. Yeah, I went to another friend of mine, uh, Fred Kerber. I don't know if you guys know him. We, we were like this in grade school, you know. Because his dad and my dad were friends, and that's the way it went. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
play ball with my husband. That's how I got to know. So, yeah. He's a good yeah. baseball player. Softball. Good. Norm, uh, Matt, Martin Kerber, and uh, Wunz. Wunz and Nick, Nick Wunz. They were mechanics at the Shuffle Garage. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. When Dad Long walked up 50 to a pickup from yes, there. Yeah. Yeah. We were out west, Spokane, uh, no, in Idaho. We we're gassing up, and here a guy come in with a pickup truck. I said, man, that's a that's a nice 52 pickup truck. Now it's a 51. I said, well, my dad hit a 52 and it looked just like it. <laughs> you don't talk to those people out there. Found <laughs> that out right away. <laughs> <laughs> we went west every year for the last 12 years, probably. Stayed there for a month, then come home. Take the Beartooth Mountain Run. Every, every year we'd take that run. Uh, through uh, Red Lodge, dump us into Yellowstone. Yes. Beautiful drive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we had a son living out in Spokane, so yeah. we went up. Yeah. Yeah. So we went on the northern, we took the whole Highway 2 straight across. Okay. Yeah. And I think almost everyone went way down to Nebraska and came up. Oh, yeah. 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 So those were nice. I'm glad we did it then, we can't do it now. Yeah. Is that the truth? Well, I ain't saying we can't do it. We don't want to do it. Did your um, children, do they, um, were they born at St. Francis? All of them except the baby. Except the baby, all of them were. Yeah, they were all, and we moved, left here in 1971. And eight of them were born here at St. Francis. And then our Johnny come lately was born at Waconia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cost $80 was, for the first one. Yeah. $80. Our oldest son, the hospital bill was $80. At the one or... Saint the old St. Francis. The old uh, yeah, uh, the poorhouse. Poor house. Yeah. Poor house. Yeah. Poor house. Yeah. At the what? Poorhouse? No, it was not. The poorhouse was there. So that was the old folks' home. Yeah. And the uh, hospital was built. Was there also? Yeah. She rolled upstairs. Right. In the poorhouse. Yeah. 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 When she worked at the hospital. Yeah. She would board the bus so. in Chakra here, the Greyhound. I shift and leave She had boarded at 10 o'clock in the morning, go to Minneapolis, do her thing, come back by 3 o'clock and go to work. Wow. We had the best bus service you could manage. Yeah, they used to really Yes, they did. Yeah. Didn't you have 17 and sleeping upstairs in that place? But I mean, nobody had any air conditioning, so yeah. no, it didn't yeah. make any I've difference. Heard people talk about how hot it was. I know. I think we were tired and just left. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> it was the way it was. <laughs> yeah. 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 Any last questions before we close for today? You were talking about vehicles and then I'll yeah. stop. I remember your dad's car. Oh, yeah. Oh, that winter. I swear to God, it was a block long. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And yeah, the floor was this long, straight six, and then a radiator, and then it had another foot and a half in front yet before the bumper. You could put another two batteries in there and get the car started in the wintertime. I think you need a park and a half. Lock now. Oh, yeah. It would never I see them re, redone now. People driving them, and I think, oh my God. I pulled in the red. Oh, yeah. When I just got it and went down to the Tri Y drive in, and here comes the state trooper pulled up alongside of it. Want to see my driver's license? Mm -hmm. Broke up the car. Broke that down in. They aren't the same. <laughs> The car didn't go with the name, or the name didn't go with the car. So I just, well, that's all right. You knew who was driving it before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I knew who it was too. We'll just leave it hang there. Did you ever get in trouble when you were growing up? Did I ever get in trouble? I mean, obviously you were a nice person, because Nancy said. So, I mean, as far as I cannot drink beer to this day, okay. and I never drank it before, I still can't drink it. You can ask my kids. Yeah. I'll maybe have a swallow. And that's it. You give me a good highball, Tom and Jerry, woof. 
Not no one I can do with that, but no, I Oh, I, yeah, no, I didn't get him. No, I got him. <laughs> dropped off at home and the next morning this lady called wanted to know if I was home. Mom went, yeah, I was home. Or her son was in the Wanted to know what happened. Well, yeah, what happened? They took off went to Chicago. Oh, oh. after oh. you you up? Yeah. Oh. Well, they picked him up for vagrancy. Oh. No, we we had a '55 Ford Fairlane, blue, white, blue, white, or whatever color. It was, uh, it was white on the, on the underneath aqua color. Yeah, <laughs> we were on Hennepin Avenue for a night. <laughs> Inside lane, car pulls up, room, room, room. This one, room, room, room. You take off, you don't get a stop, let me stop. Rum, rum, rum. He takes off, I stay here. And the cop was up on the end. <laughs> I remember it vividly. That's what I remember. Happy. Lucky. Lucky. That's what we, to get into Minneapolis, they went to Old 169 yeah. through up Lake of the Isles, Calhoun, enter into Hennepin Avenue and Lake. We got the. The rainbow and the western. Yeah. Yeah. They were wonderful. They bought it. Right in the theater district. Yeah. The art film are all wonderful. Yeah. Radio City was still beautiful. We're all over the night buildings now. Yeah, That's I know. It's, it's a shame. Yeah. The yeah. staircase is wide. You could four or five beautiful. people abreast if yeah. you want. Um, carpeting. They had these little cutouts on the wall where you could Set overlooking. Yeah, like an opera house, you yeah. know, these little ones yeah. overlooking. Yeah. Well, we sure appreciated your time, and you know, we I've also video videotaped you now, but we also videotaped you last time too. Yes. So it's really great because I think you have such good memories well, uh, I enjoy of this specific it. thing, and it makes it really interesting for us yeah. here now to know about that stuff. So I really do appreciate taking the time to do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Yeah.